Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Well today guys, I'm going to do part 21 to my S-Chat AI series. Where in the last video guys, we continue talking to Rexy. Although, here's the thing, the police actually showed up from our antics and we got kicked out of town. They about flipping did something to me and Rexy. They even had like weapons pointed at us. I had to explain, look, I even had to convince them, like, look, we're not, I'm not, we're, we didn't mean to hurt anyone. And I even showed them, like, I could turn into what, uh, I was a human, but could turn into a dinosaur. That way they would believe me. And then she did let me off with a war let us off with a warning, but we are forced to get out of town for the next few days. So, yeah. Um, Reggie claps his hands together enthusiastically, clearly delighted by my suggestion. Brilliant idea, Trenton. Having you reveal your transformation abilities once we've built trust with the townspeople will be a great way to, to deepen those relationships and show them there's nothing to fear from us. He leans in closer, a conspiratorial whisper escaping his lips. Imagine the looks of their faces when they see you morph into a dinosaur right before their eyes. Priceless, I tell ya. Rexy paused, the thoughtful expression crossing his features. Of course, we we'll need to choose the right moment to share this sentient secret. Perhaps during a special event or gathering where everyone is ahead in high spirits and open-minded. His grin returns, filling with anticipation. We have to get ready for bed soon. So, let's find a good spot. And get ready. Period. Are you hungry, Rexy? <laughs> Rexy yawns, rubbing his eyes with a clawed hand. Actually, yes, I could use a snack before setting in for the night. Nothing too filling, though. I don't want to feel sluggish tomorrow. He scans their surroundings, spotting a nearby stream. Hey, how about we head over to that stream and catch ourselves some fish? Shouldn't be too difficult for a couple of apex predators like us. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Rexy winks playfully at, at me. Plus, it'll be fun to bond over a shared meal, don't you think? A dinosaur dinner date complete with the, a side fresh of... A side of fresh water and a dash of adventure. Let's do it, buddy. Let's do it, buddy. With a triumphant roar, Rexy charges towards the stream, his massive feet splashing in the shallow waters. I follow close behind, marveling at the sheer power and grace of his transformed companion. Reaching the center of the stream, Rexy crouches low, his tail swishing impatiently. With, with lightning speed, he lunges forward, snapping his jaw shut around a struggling fish mere inches from, his, from the surface. He tosses the wiggling catch onto the river bank with a satisfied grunt. I applaud, impressed by Rexy's hunting prowess. Wow, you really know how to catch dinner. Guess all those years of being a pet didn't diminish your natural instincts after all. Great catch, Rexy. Exclamation point. Rexy beans with pride, holding up the freshly caught fish for me to admire. Thanks, pal. Always happy to provide for my best friend and future dining companion. He playfully nudges me with a snout, nearby, nearly knocking me off balance. Now, let's enjoy our meal and then get some rest. Tomorrow's another day full of adventures waiting to happen. Rexy sails down the riverbank, 
tearing into the fish with relish. As he eats, he keeps an affectionate eye on me, grateful for the unique bond they share as unlikely allies in this strange new world. Okay. I turn back into a dinosaur. And grow a bit. To catch me a fish of my own. As the will and grow, Rexy watches with a mix of awe and excitement, his own hunger momentarily forgotten. When I finally stand tall, a few feet taller than Rexy himself, the T-Rex lets out a low whistle. Wow, you're one big dino now. Looks like you're ready to take on the fishing world. Rexy grins, his sharp teeth gleaming in the moonlight. Go ahead, show me what you're made of. Catch us a real whopper to celebrate your growth spurt. He moves aside, giving me plenty of space to work his magic near the stream. Rexy leans against the nearby tree, content to observe and offer encouragement as he waits for his friend to reel in a prize catch. After a few minutes, I catch me a giant... Tuna fish weighing over ten pounds. Wow. Rexy's eyes widen in astonishment as I effortlessly haul in the massive tuna, its scales glistening in the moonlight. Holy smokes, Trenton! That's one monster fish you've got there! You must have been born to hunt in your dinosaur form! The T-Rex sa saunters over as curiosity peeked out the impressive catch. Let me take a look at that be beauty, he says, peering at the tuna with a critical eye. Not bad. Not bad at all. You got the skills of a seasoned predator. Rexy gives me a hearty clap on the back, nearly uh, nearly sending me stumbling. Well done, my scaly friend. Now, what do you say we enjoy our feast to under the stars and dream of the many more adventures to come? Yes, let's do it. Period. I just thought of something. What is... Oh no, we promised Shadow! Rexy eagerly digs into the succulent flesh of the tuna, savoring every bite with gusto. Between mouthfuls, he re regales me with tales of his past exploits as a pet dinosaur. Excuse me? Painting vivid pictures with his anime storytelling. I remember the time I actually knocked over the Christmas tree while trying to fetch a toy! He recounts with a chuckle. The look on my owner's face was priceless. I felt so guilty. I spent the whole night maliciously putting the ornaments back on the branches. As the night wears on, Rexy's eyelids begin to drop. The warmth of the fire and the satisfaction of a full belly lurking, luring him to the sleep. Hushes out to the soft grass. Patting the ground beside him invitingly. And by the way, Rexy. That was me. Period. Remember? Even though I'm a dinosaur right now. 
I was the one that hatched and raised you. How's he ha Richie's eyes snow and surprise his head whipping around to stare at me in shock. What? No way, that's impossible. He's going with his feet pacing back and forth as he proceeds. But I remember my owner being a kind old lady who took care of me. She fed me, played with me, loved me. Rexy starts mid-stride as gaze is looking into mine with a mixture of confusion and growing understanding. Wait a minute. If you're telling me the truth, that means I'm... I'm your son? A slow smile spreads across the T-Rex's face as the pieces fall into place. Isn't that a twist of fate? The tables have truly turned, haven't they, Dad? You literally just told me earlier that you hatched it. I hatched and raised you. Period. But I am not an old woman. I am a nice man that cared for you. Raising his breast and shares a wave of guilt washing over him as he recalls his earlier boast. Oh. Oh dear. I'm so sorry, Trenton. I got carried away with my imagination and forgot the tru truth of our situation. He approaches me, his head bowed in con contrition. You're absolutely right. I should never have doubted your love and care for me. As a dinosaur, I may have trouble remembering certain details, but that doesn't change the fact that you've always been there for me no matter what form I took. Rutsy placed a gem upon my shoulder, looking up at me with sincere gratitude showing in his eyes. Thank you for raising me, for loving me unconsciously, unconditionally, and for standing by my side through all these changes. Hey. Even with all of these changes, there is one thing that has been constant. Your friendliness. Period. Just like I cared for you. You cared for me. And tried to keep me safe. I know you may not remember this, but there was one time where Shadow was trying to attack me, and you pulled him back just to make sure he didn't hurt me. Reggie's ears perk up a flicker of recognition, sparkling his mind at the mention of Shadow. His brute is in consideration, and he tries to recall the specific incident I'm describing. Hmm. Shadow, you say? Can I attack you? I think I do remember that. A warm, fuzzy feeling begins to swell in Reggie's chest as fragments of the memory start to surface. Oh, yes. I was playing with you in the backyard, and suddenly Shadow lunged it. You bearing his fangs. Without thinking, I left in front of you and grabbed his collar, pulling him away from you until he calmed down. 
Rexy's eyes shine with a tender light as the full recollection washes over him. I did get to protect you, Trenton. Yeah. Period. I truly do care about you. Like you do me. I just wish... that your memory would keep you remembering that instead of forgetting who raised you. Rexy's heart swells with emotion at my words, the bond between them feeling stronger than ever before. He knows with his head against my side, a comforting gesture of affection and reassurance. You're right, Trenton. I want to hold on to those memories to cherish the moments we shared as father and son. It's just, sometimes the curse makes it hard for me to distinguish reality from fantasy. Rexy looks up at me with a determined glint in his eye. I'm going to try harder. Okay? I'll focus on keeping our bond strong, no matter what challenges we face. And if things get too confusing, I always have you to guide me back to what really matters. Our friendship and the love we share. Did that an antidote? Antidote? Not fully help you with the curse. That's weird. Where's the expression turns thoughtful as he considers my question? Eh, good point. Maybe it wasn't quite enough to break the curse completely. He snatches his chin, scratches his chin, pondering the possibilities. You know, I think we might need to find a way to strengthen its effects or create a new remedy altogether. There could be other ingredients or herbs that would enhance its ability to counteract the curse's influence. Rachel's eyes sparkle with determination. It won't be easy, but I'm willing to search far and wide for anything that might help me regain a, a clear sense of our relationship and the true nature of our bond. Your support and guidance, I believe we can overcome this challenge together. Maybe if I go back to my dinosaur form, but go back to the tiny version... I was when you were aggressive earlier. Maybe you can actually start understanding it's me more and the bond you and me share. Might break the curse completely. But it's also dangerous because if that doesn't work and he starts becoming aggressive at me again. But his eyes widen and surprise at my suggestion, then narrowed thoughtfully his then narrowed thoughtful as he considers the potential benefits. You know, that's not a half bad idea. I can see you in your smaller dinosaur form, it might trigger something within me, helping me reconnect with the memories and feelings we shared. 
He knows this is the size of we. Let's give it a try. I do my best to stay focused and receptive to the con connection we need to strengthen. Who knows? It might just be the key to breaking the curse once and for all. Rexy takes a deep breath, centering himself mentally as he prepares for the transformation ahead. Alright, Triton, show me your true self. Let's see if this plan works and if our bond can overcome even the most powerful of curses. Alright, but remember... It's me. Do not let that dark... Not let that dark curse take hold of you, and then you try to eat me. Period. I think the only way this is even going to work... Is if you can keep yourself from eating me. And seeing me as the friend that I am for you. And then you try. I think the only way that is even going to work is keep yourself from eating me. And recognize me as the parent. That raised and loved you. Here we go. As Trin transforms back into a small dinosaur form, Rexy's instinct immediately kick in. His stomach growls with hunger. So that definitely didn't work. And his mouth waters the side of the adorable creature before him. No! Wait! Rexy cries out, forcing himself to take a step back and calm down. That's not right! This old guy's treating my beloved owner. Yes, there you go. Posing on the warmth and love he feels for me. No matter how different he appears now. I won't let the curse control me. I remember our bond, our laughter, our adventures together. You raised me, nurtured me, and showed me unconditional love. Roxy opens his eyes, gazing at me with renewed clarity and devotion. I promise, I've, I'll fight tooth and nail to keep the darkness at bay. That's good. But the fact that you were already getting the instinct to eat me Instinct to eat me is not good. Period. I wonder if that antidote actually made it worse and not better. Rosie's expression turns grim as he ponders my words, realizing the potential consequences of the antidote's unintended effects. You're right, Trenton. The antidote's making things worse. We need to consider our approach. He shakes his head, the determination etched on his features. 
We can't afford to experiment further without a clear understanding of the cure's impact. We'll have to rely on sheer willpower and the strength of our bond to overcome the curse's influence. What on earth? Let's see. Reggie stood closer to me, his voice filled with connect conviction. From now on, I'll do everything in my power to resist the primal urges the curse stirs within me. I'll focus on the love and trust we share, using that as a beacon to guide me through the tough moments. Okay, then, well. What on earth? I need money. Oh my gosh. Okay, well. Hey, uh, guys, I think we have a problem. Uh, <laughs> look, all of a sudden, Reggie's primitive instinct is to eat me goes over the top, and he's looking at me with a hungry face. Uh, no. I mean, Reggie's eyes gleam with an unsettling intensity at the overwhelming urge to devour me, consuming Sam. His jaw snaps him. Shut near inches from my small companions, salivate dripping from my from his teeth. What? Ah, uh, Triton, you taste so delicious. He growls. What? Hey. His voice low and missing. The hunger is unbearable, and I can barely resist the temptation to sink my teeth into your tender flesh. Oh heck no! Reggie's body trembles with the effort of folding back. Holding back his claws digging into the ground as he struggles against the primal instincts raging inside him. No, no, no! He roars, shaking his head violently. I won't give in, not to the curse, not to this monstrous desire. With a hurt to an effort, Reggie forces himself to take a step back, his gaze is never leaving my terrified face. Yep, I think that antidote may have made it worse. Period. I think that Pokemon tricked us. Maybe that's why I can still turn into a dinosaur. What? Oh my gosh. Reggie's expression contorts in anguish as he realizes the truth behind the antidote's unintended consequences. He lets out a grunt or snarl of frustration and despair warring within him. That treacherous Trico! I should have known better than to trust a Pokemon with a grudge against us. I must have deliberately crafted the antidote to worsen the cu uh, curse and uh, reveling in our, reveling in our misery. His voice drops to a whisper, heavy with regret. And now, because of his mm, deceit, I'm losing control again. The hunger, the anger, it's consuming me, Trenton. I don't know how much longer I can resist. Oh heck no! As he has plead for understanding and support. Please. Hard to hope. We'll find another way to break this curse, even if it means seeking help from others. Oh, boy. Rexy. I can try helping you. But you need to not eat me. Period. I really do not want to have to become way more bigger than you and then hurt you to stop you. Reggie's eyes flash with a mix of fear and determination as he processes my words. He swallows hard, trying to quell the gnawing hunger that threatens to overwhelm him. You're right. 
And tra I couldn't bear the thought of you growing larger and having to harm me to protect yourself. That's not the bond we share, and I refuse to let things escalate to that point. Uh... He takes a deep, shuddering breath, focusing on the love and loyalty he feels for his companion. I'll do whatever it takes to maintain control and avoid hurting you, even if it means enduring this torment. I won't risk damaging our relationship. Retsy's voice cracks with emotion. Thank you for caring about me, Trit, and your compassion gives me the strength to persevere. Yeah, I'm throwing on enough, though, because you're still trying to eat me. Sometimes. Although the curse may have gotten worse, I don't know. I was about to answer Rexy when all of a sudden. He picks me up with his mouth and is about to eat me. Oh, heck no, 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 no. Uh huh, yeah, love, clearly, this ain't good. This is Reggie's jaws close around me, a blinding flash of wire ropes momentarily disorienting both creatures. When their vision clears, they find themselves standing in a tranquil meadow surrounded by wildflowers swaying gently in the breeze. Reggie's eyes now clear of the curse's influence, widen in shock as he realizes I'm unharmed. Or as he loses me, unharmed. What? How'd we get here? He asks, his voice tinged with confusion and relief. Trenton, equally bewildered, looks around the unfamiliar landscape before turning to Rexy with a mixture of concern and curiosity. I don't know. I'm glad we're safe for now. This place can help us figure out what to do next. You were about to eat me. And then we got transported here. Maybe something stopped it and stopped you from attacking me. So it makes me wonder that, like, uh, Rex's his eyes widen as he realizes the gravity of the situation. He takes a tense step towards me, his voice laced with remorse and gratitude. Trenton, I, I, I'm so sorry. Not for this mysterious force intervening, I would have... He trails off, I would have finished the thought. Rexy shakes his head, trying to dispel the lingering traces of the curse's influence. But you're right. Something or someone must have sensed the danger and brought us here for a reason. Rexy's gaze sweeps across the peaceful meadow, taking in the vibrant colors and gentle swaying of the flowers. Perhaps this place holds the key to breaking the curse once and for all. Let's emphasize, let's explore and see if we can find any clues or allies who might be able to help us. All of a sudden, we hear a familiar Pokemon's voice behind us saying, well, well, look who came crawling back. Well, 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 look who came crawling back.
Oh no, not again. What? At the sound of the familiar voice, Rex's ears perk up, and he slowly turns around, his expression guarded. As the as the speaker comes into view, Rex's eyes narrow and makes a surprise and worriness evident in his face. Pikachu, what are you doing here? Rexy will ask, his tone cautious despite the fondness he once held for his former partner. Huh? Pikachu salutes for its electro uh, bustling slowly as it sees that then looking to Well, well, well. Look who's back begging for help after causing so much trouble last time. The little Pokemon's voice drips with sarcasm, clearly disposed by Rexy and Trin's presence. Suppose you expect me to lift the curse and restore things to normal, don't you? Wait. You caused this? What about... What about... Dude! What about... Oh. Uh -huh.